our campaign chairman, Bud Haino, and I earnestly request your support in this campaign. This year, the needs are great, and we have enlisted a brilliant campaign organization of dedicated men and women to do this job. Typical of our leadership as a campaign chairman and the president of the DVUF of 1952. Russ Brown of Roebling and Jim Stewart of De Laval. Jim, what is the greatest strength of the Delaware Valley United Fund? Lou, in my opinion, the most important factor in our success is the solicitation only at our places of work. Practically all of our community's worthwhile services are in DVUF. We can now say with real conviction that we give once for all and only where we work. Russ, what do you think our greatest strength is? Lou, the acceptance of the fair share plan has been remarkable. No one is asked to give too much, one hour's pay per month, and one campaign a year. And the terrific pride in our campaigns are now accomplished facts. Incidentally, this year for the first time, the American Red Cross is going to participate on a 100% basis, and they won't have a separate campaign next March. This map shows our area of solicitation. There we have Hopewell Township with the Hopewell Borough, Pennington Borough, Ewing Township, Lawrence Township, our city of Trenton with Hamilton Township, and the northern part of Burlington County with Bordentown, Fieldsboro, and Roebling, and also Chesterfield Township. This is our area of service as well as solicitation. We believe that the people who earn their money in this area will respect their obligation to our community. We will not conduct a door-to-door -door campaign. We will only solicit where people work. Lou and Bud, I remember three years ago, Jim Stewart and I tried to reach everyone with the United Fund story. We even made a movie of a visit to the Red Feather Services. You know, I remember that movie, Russ, and today we've invited some of the folks who went on that tour three years ago. We also have with us Tommy Dunn, president of the AF of L, and Charlie Kovacs, president of the CIO. I want all of you to sit in on a very interesting experiment. Let's go back to that day in July, 1952. Let's see what happened on that visit that changed the course of DVUF history. Lights out, please. They began their tour at the Catholic Welfare Bureau on Clinton Avenue. Milan Bogdan, CIO, Russ Brown, Roeblings, Jim Stewart, De Laval, Walter Shelmut, AF of L, Vilma Are, State House. And they heard about an actual case handled by the Catholic Welfare Bureau. The true story of Alice, a young woman unwed and about to have a baby. This was a typical problem requiring extraordinary understanding, months of tender, loving care for both the mother and her child. The Catholic Welfare Bureau and its sister organizations, St. Elizabeth's Nursing Home, St. Michael's Children's Home, Mount Carmel Guild, and the St. James Day Nursery handle hundreds of cases like this round the clock, plus family counseling, nursing services, and spiritual guidance. On their way to the next Red Feather service, the tour group talked about the needs of our USO and the dozens of other vital organizations that make up the fiber of our prosperous community. And they thought about the confusion that might overtake our town if each of them had to run independent campaigns. They stopped at the Children's Home Society of New Jersey, and a skilled caseworker told the group 
about a broken home, a father halfway round the world, and the mother who had suddenly deserted her two children. Red Cross, Trenton Chapter, relayed the story to the military and public welfare authorities. After several days of searching, block by block, the children were located at the home of a distant relative. And then came examinations, studies, interviews, and more searching to find a suitable foster home. Finally, the children were placed not far away in Hunterdon County, and work was begun to reunite the family at some future date. At the Cerebral Palsy Clinic, the tour group met Sandy, a spastic palsy case. Hundreds of treatments, plus an incredible patience, had brought Sandy to the point where she could almost, but not quite, feed herself, could almost talk, could almost walk. Tens of thousands of youngsters are our fellow citizens. Their care runs into millions of dollars. Their destiny is in our hands. July 1952. The group that went on a Red Feather tour that day will never forget that Delaware Valley document. No, we haven't forgotten that trip, and we're all still working for the United Fund. You know, I wondered uh, what happened to Sandy and some of the other people in that film. Yes, and so have I. Uh, did these Red Feather stories ever have a happy ending, I wonder? Well, now, we decided to get the answers to that question, Jim, and here comes some of our unique experiments. Just a few weeks ago, we sent our cameras back to finish their story. Let's see what happened. Alice, the frightened, awestruck young girl, decided that she could not give proper care to her baby and left the child in care of the Bureau late in 1952. We will keep faith with Alice and keep her true identity a secret. Today, she has fought her way back to a productive, useful position in our community. She works as a typist in one of our industrial plants. She will undoubtedly see this picture. And she would want us to thank you for the help you gave. And her baby is doing well, too. She is one of hundreds of children placed each year for adoption in homes where a child's voice might not otherwise be heard. Would you say, Grace, bless us, O Lord, and, and these gifts, gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. You will remember Betty and Joanne. Three years ago, they were placed in a foster home. Children's Home Society has full custody of the youngsters. And look at them now. Where are they? Well, they're living in exactly the same home where they were three years ago, with just about the nicest foster folks that anyone could wish for. Where are they headed? Oh, perhaps someday they'll, well, adopt some permanent parents. But right now, thanks to the Children's Home Society, they're having a wonderful time. And say, aren't we glad we helped? Sandy, remember? Three years ago. But before we see Sandy as she is today, please, please do not expect that some miracle may have taken place. Since these scenes were made, Sandy has been under care night and day. Here she is, still smiling, despite the hundreds of times she has fallen to the floor with each attempt to walk. What has happened here? More than eight unbelievable years of patient care to restore this precious human to some measure of independence. Eight grinding years of treatment so that maybe Maybe Sandy will be able to run and play like your kids and mine. Eight years of care, at what price? 
more than four years' wages of a skilled industrial worker. Eight anguished, tormented years. But never once has the flicker of hope faded. Now, what do you want us to do? Are we winning our battle? How will you measure your own fair share to keep the fires of hope and desire burning in this child? Where do you stand in our struggle for her mind and body? I... I am Danny Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. We face a challenge. These children need you. Will you answer that challenge? Can we count on you to do your fair share?